Alright, this is uh, part three of the rectangle video. Um, I wanted to add a new function to the rectangle so that we can see it inside of the canvas element. So let's start with, uh, well, it'll be a draw function, so let's make it. This dot draw is equal to a function. Uh, we're going to take in the context and we're going to take in a color. Uh, the color is just going to be a string value. So now uh, let's add our terminator to the end of that. Now we can say um, ctx dot fill style is equal to color, and then we can say ctx dot fill rect. This is a canvas built-in function. Both of these are because you can see it comes after inside of the context object. So context fill rect, and say this dot uh, x this dot y, this dot width, and this dot height. That's all we need to do to make our uh, draw function. So now let's jump back into the main JS code. Let's create a set interval. We'll call it, uh, we'll just say set interval uh, function. We'll create a new function as interval and set it to 33 frames per second. Uh, before we do finish our set interval, let's create a rectangle. Now, um, what we'll have to do is go into our index.html, go down to script, and below script, add script src equals rectangle.js. So now we add our, our uh, rectangle script. In fact, we got to put it before the main JS because we're going to call our rectangle inside of main JS. So order of operations is important. So let's go back to our main JS and let's create a rectangle. Var r a c t equals new rectangle. Let's add an x. Let's say 15, 15 for the y, uh, width of 50 and a height of 50. So we make it a a square. So instead of our draw function, we want to call rect dot draw. Well, instead of sorry, instead of our set interval, we want to call rect dot draw and then pass in the context. This should work. However, as we all know, programming not everything works exactly how we'd like it to work. And if we come up with bugs, oh look, there's our rectangle, our black rectangle. Let's see if we have any errors. Um, nope, no errors. That's good. So uh, we have a black rectangle. Remember that we, inside of our draw function, we can also pass in a color. So let's call it red. And there we go. We have a red rectangle being drawn in our canvas, which remember is the size of the window. So let's make a second rectangle. Var rect equals new rectangle. We'll set it at <clears throat> we'll set it next to it. Well, let's see, 50, uh, let's put it at 80 on the x, 15 on the y, 50 and 50 again. Now we'll call this rect2, sorry, we don't name it the same thing. Now we'll say rect2.draw, ctx, and we'll, co we'll color it blue. And there we go, we have a red and a blue rectangle. Now let's create a little function. Let's let's find out whether we if we click inside of the rectangle. So in our set interval, let's say if rect dot contains um, we are not capturing a mouse right now. We'll capture it later. But let's simulate a mouse and say our mouse is at uh, 20 on the x and 20 on the Y. This will put it inside our first rectangle. So if we alert that out, say alert rectangle contains point 2020, we'll get a true because 2020 is inside of here. However, um, sorry, that's in a set interval so it's going to keep popping up. So, however, if we want to, I'll show you, if we put this at 14 and 14, 
it's not inside the rectangle so if we were to refresh this page we will get a false that point is not inside of there now to illustrate my point uh, if I wanted to determine whether the mouse was inside that rectangle I would say rect dot contains and then once I capture the mouse's X and Y I would pass in mouse X and mouse Y and that will have the mouse's X position and Y position um, so we can pass it in like that to get the mouse's position to see if it contains it now let's now that we know that our contains function works let's check out our intersect function let's say let's ask let's alert out if rectangle uh, con dot intersect rectangle 2 false Inter the first rectangle does not intersect rectangle 2 now we want it to intersect so let's comment this out and let's move our second rectangle inside of our first rectangle let's put it at 25 on the y and 25 on the let's make it 35 so it's about halfway through now let's go over here and look at it now we know this blue is intersecting this red that is for sure because it's inside of it now let's uncomment this and see what it has to say true our, rec our rectangles are intersecting this is true so our our function for checking if two rectangles collide is working and there's a lot of benefits that we can do to that let's just say let's move our blue rectangle to the left let's put it back to where it was at 80 and 15 now let's move our blue rectangle to the left uh, by one pixel every single frame so we will say uh, rect 2 dot x or minus equals because we're going to the left one pixel so we're moving it over one let's first of all see if this animation works oh our x is moving and it's it's looking very weird it's just pulling our x over forever so <clears throat> let's first check the console to see if we have any errors no so um, I will pause the video check what I did wrong and come back sorry I was only gone for a second and I realized what I did wrong what I did wrong was that I did not clear the canvas this is what will happen if you do not clear the canvas it will just keep drawing on top of itself like this so what we need to do in order to clear the canvas is call our context dot clear rect and then we have to pass in the full size of the canvas so let's uh, we first pass in uh, the x that we want to clear the y that we want to clear the width which will be the canvas dot width and the canvas dot height so it'll clear the entire thing so now if we go back you can see that it, now it's moving our animation is working now we want this blue rectangle to bounce back to the right whenever it collides with the red rectangle. So let's figure out how we do that. We already know this returns a true or false as we saw in the alert. So now we can say if rect2 dot intersects, sorry I can't spell, intersects rect, then we want to push it back to the right. So we want to create a variable number of how we're moving it. Let's call var movement equals negative one. So we'll say x plus equals movement. Now if it hits it we'll say movement equals uh, we'll just say times times equals negative one. This will make it the opposite of what it is. So if it's negative one you multiply it by negative one it becomes positive one. So let's see what happens. Our blue square hit it and bounced off. And that's exactly how we tell for collisions. Now we have an, a good function, easy to call, and we pass in another shape, and we can get back the uh, the result, the the actual collision. So you could do all. You can make this uh, anything. You, we can add another rectangle. Let's make it bounce between two rectangles. So let's set this one at. Uh, let's see let's say 150 150 on the X 
and we'll also color that one um, we'll color it red as well and then we'll say if rectangle 2 intersects rect or rectangle 2 dot intersects rectangle 3 and we now can determine it and it will bounce between the two rectangles and there you go we have our rectangles fully working they if working they we know if there's a point inside so if it's a mouse position or even a dot or anything we can even think of we can tell if it's inside that rectangle and now we can tell if two rectangles collide or two shapes collide once we start acting more shapes so this is the basis of collision 2d collision inside of uh, HTML5 and JavaScript Canvas. So that is it for this one and next we're going to start working on other functions that we can add to make our game framework feel better like vector twos and appending different prototypes to arrays so that we can easily remove and, and add things. So uh, thanks for watching and look out for the next video.